and prepare for the second half of life. Join your host, Attorney Kim Hegwood of Your Legacy Legal Care and our weekly guest as we navigate the challenges that emerge as life happens. Now here's your host, Kim Hegwood. Good morning. Welcome to me, to Life Happens with me, Kim Hegwood. And our very special guest today is Jody K. Venusa. And she's with USA Geriatric Services. Good morning. Good morning, Kim. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I, I greatly appreciate it. Can't wait to talk about what we're going to talk about. And uh, so, well, one of those things is that, you know, we're, we use a lot of geriatric care managers in, in my practice. And so, so we're always happy to have one on the show. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to talk about uh, jumping into caregiving feet first, um, usually when you don't expect it. <laughs> and so, and, uh, and probably the biggest unexpected event that can happen, you know, in a life is somebody falls. <laughs> Yeah. And so now things are chaotic and unknown. And so so somebody calls you, they're in a panic. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So let's really actually take one step back and say that I was a hospital discharge planner for almost 16 years in the orthopedic and neurosciences unit. So I saw this every day where an elderly person would have a fall and fracture their hip or their pelvis or bump their head and have a suddenly a traumatic brain injury. And the families are literally left reeling. And I want to give out just a couple of facts um, before I jump into um, the question that you asked me. So whether or not you know this, if your loved one falls and fractures their pelvis, that is typically a non-surgical diagnosis, and you are expected to discharge the very next day, if not sooner. So that's really what I want to get out there and let people know that if if a fall happens, you, you have to have a plan before the fall happens. So I think that is my number one piece of advice. Have the conversation with your aging loved one. Should something happen and you end up in the hospital, what would you like to see happen? So you're not left making all the decisions when you are in a tizzy. You already are, you're going to have had that discussion and you're going to at least have some kind of a plan. So that's the number one uh, thing. I would also say be there, be present, make sure that you are understanding everything that is happening. Ask your questions, keep a notebook with you, document everything because it is really scary when your loved one falls and they have a broken bone or a traumatic head injury or something like that. You, you, it's hard to remember everything that you want to ask. And I'm really going to tiptoe here, but this is what how I practiced as a social worker in the ortho unit is don't let people tell you what to do, where to go, how to plan. That's why it's so important to have the discussion before a crisis occurs. And so, yeah, we try really hard with every client coming in, you know, to have all those discussions. You know, if you become disabled and incapacitated, what are you going to do? Who's going to take care of you? What's the plan? And um, and so because a lot of families don't like to talk about this. And yeah. so and, yeah. uh, I laugh and tell people all the time that uh, in my family, we talk about everything, death, mm-hmm. dying, and you name yep. it. We talk about everything. Absolutely. And um, we've just been one of those crazy families that do, usually at the kitchen table, nonetheless. And so, so it is really important to kind of think about those things. And, um, and so I always usually tell clients, you kind of keep an eye if they start to, you know, not walking as well. You take all the rugs out, move all the rugs. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a huge conversation with a client one time. Her mom had a Persian rug. And she's like, mom's never going to let me pull this rug up. And I said, but doesn't the rug need to be cleaned? She goes, oh, I said, yes, the rug needs to be cleaned. So roll it up, put it in the garage. <laughs> and so it's like, <laughs> let's get it out of the house, you know. So, you yeah. know, cause it's just a huge fall risk. And yeah. so, yeah. And, one, uh, other, so- one other thing, if I could add, 
most caregivers actually begin their caregiver journey out of a sense of obligation mm -hmm. because of a crisis. Yep. And that can really turn sour quickly. So that's why, you know, I, I can't agree more with you how important it is to have those discussions. I talk about everything with my parents as well. <laughs> and so they probably are not as appreciative as you want them to be for that, but um, it is good to be able to do that. And so, yeah. Yeah. so let's kind of switch gears just a tiny bit and, you know, and say, and tell us what kind of questions these kids should be, you know, asking if the, when the parents in the hospital or the rehab facility, you know, what kind of information, you know, and things do they need to know? Mm hmm. Yep. So um, most likely your loved one is going to be discharged either from the rehab center or from the hospital when they're medically stable as deemed by Medicare. So don't be afraid to ask exactly what that means. And if you don't feel your loved one is quite ready to discharge, st state why, you know, d don't just take it. Um, you know, I've seen people pushed out of the hospital way before they were honestly even you know emotionally ready i mean everything is a process um you're going to get some pushback i guarantee you will from the medical team but that's okay that's really okay um ask to stay another day and you might be told that well you're you're going to get a denial letter from medicare well, that's okay you've got 24 hours to appeal that so I'm not saying that you should actually delay the discharge because I don't want to give that message either. But you know in your heart and in your head if your loved one is medically stable for discharge. Um, and I, I think ask the questions. Um, be aware if, if they are admitted into the hospital for, let's just say, a hip fracture, but they've got this sore on their foot don't expect the hospital to tend to the sore because that's not why they were admitted. So keep that in mind too. I know I had a lot of really disgruntled family members at the hospital because other issues weren't being taken care of. But understand that Medicare doesn't quite work that way. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, ask um, what facilities are currently taking uh, rehab patients. Um, Always ask, always ask for a list from Medicare.gov, from your discharge plan or social worker. On that list that they hand you, you should be able to see how many stars that Medicare has given to that uh, facility. And personally, I would not allow any of my family to go to any community, any facility that is under a three-star rating. So you do have that right. That is a Medicare right that you do get choices of where you go. And so, perfect. And uh, so uh, we, I tell a lot of clients too here that um, there's some facilities that we don't want you to be in. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so I, I, I explain to them gently, I can send you to some place that you're gonna get well, or I can send you to a place to die, what's your preference? <laughs> so, so please call us before the hospital sends you to some place because yes. we wanna make sure you're in a good one. And, um, yes. and so, so that's extremely good advice about making sure that they're in a good, in a good place. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. but what about if, um, what about if that parent has dementia? you know, or okay. Alzheimer's, I mean, uh, how does that play into, you know, where, you know, where we send, you know, that parent? Sure, sure. So really it depends on how severe the dementia or the Alzheimer's is. Um, so, you know, if it's just mild, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But if you are that child of a demented loved one, I am, I can't, I'm getting covered in goosebumps to tell you how important it is that you are at the hospital make sure that you are there. Um, your, your loved one with a fractured hip, how are they supposed to remember that they can't walk? Somebody needs to sit with them. And the last thing, honestly, that you really want is for your loved one to, to get a label kind of placed on them through the nursing notes, which does happen because they have to document behaviors. It's, it's a requirement. But you want to keep your loved one calm. You want to make sure that, that they are dischargeable, if that makes any sense. I was kind of known as the, 
the queen of difficult discharges, especially <laughs> when it came to folks that had dementia and with a broken bone. I would help the nursing staff um, document pleasant things, nice things, um, making sure that we would get things in the room that would help this, this patient with dementia feel safer, feel more relaxed. Um, baby dolls um, are wonderful in the hospital. But most of all, just make sure that you are present and you are there. I, th I think that is because they're in a new environment and chaos can just really, really go crazy. Yeah, especially when there's someplace they have no idea where they're at. And so it's scary. And um, it's like waking up in, in a new place. And, you know, I think it would be scary for all of us to wake up in a place and have no idea where we were at. Definitely. Um, so definitely. So why um, is it important to have someone to, to talk to you know, not not necessarily not families or, or friends because you don't necessarily get good advice there. They're well-meaning, but you don't necessarily get good advice there. But maybe you know, like a consultant, a coach, somebody, a yeah. care manager, somebody who's that's what they do. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, my my first answer, my first response to that is, you know, if your car breaks down, where do you take it? Do you take it to the grocery store to get fixed? Do you take it to your neighbor who doesn't know anything about fixing cars? Do you take it to your dad because you feel obligated? No, you take it to the shop where the mechanic is the professional. So that's what we are. We are professionals in our industry. Um, it is a very specialized skill set. And we do know how to get through the healthcare system. And we do know how, we know how to maneuver um, to get to get to what you want. So I think that's the first thing. It's important that you don't rely on friends and family, just like you said, because they are well-meaning, but they don't understand the system like we do. So I think that's that's the, the first thing. So secondly is we are gonna think objectively. We can see the whole picture. We're not focused and, and, and stuck on all the emotional impact of what's happening. We can see clearly how things could play out. So you do want someone in your corner that knows what to say that that and that can share even the hard things with you. That's important. Sometimes we need to hear the hard things. Yeah, sometimes that's not as easy to, you know, to take and so and uh, but definitely, you know, it is important to get to get the facts, good, bad, or ugly. You want to know the facts. And so, because that's the only way you can make good informed decisions is by knowledge. And so we do that all the time. It's got to have knowledge. Yeah. So let's, um, let's talk about geriatric consultants because I'm a huge yeah. fan. And, um, and so, and how can they help caregivers? Yeah. So interesting. Um, so I do label myself as a geriatric consultant and not a care manager. So what the difference is, as a consultant, I am more of like a geriatric concierge. I really <laughs> love the way that sounds, and that just energizes me to really help my clients. So when I, when I wear the, the hat geriatric care manager, I feel more boxed in, and I feel like I have to follow a set of SOP, so to speak, even though I have them. <laughs> but I love the geriatric consultant because I can share with you my opinion. I can share with you what I think is the best. I can do all the research for you. I can offer up ideas that you probably never thought of. So that's that's what a geriatric consultant is, and that's how it differs. A, a care manager is going to follow you more long term. I don't do that. Um, you're free to call me if you have an issue and, and we'll connect, but I'm not going to manage your care after um, we're finished working together. So I like being that concierge. I like showing families exactly what's out there. So give me an example. I call you mm -hmm. and I say, um, I need help. Mm -hmm kind of walk us through just kind of a short version of um, what does that look like? Sure. 
So I do offer a free 30 minute clarity call is what I call. And I call it a clarity call because you need clarity and I need clarity. We need to find out if working together is, is a good fit. So during that 30 minute call, I ask you to explain your story and I ask you questions about it. I ask you um, all kinds of different things. Um, I've got a checklist and we need to make sure that we get everything answered. And at the end, then you are the one who decides if, if working together is going to be right. I will never push anyone into working with me because that's not the way to go. Um, we both have to agree. And I love that. I love that the, the, if you're calling me, you are in complete charge. My role during that call is to gather the facts and determine whether or not I can help you. So that's, that's pretty much what a call is. And then we'll get in touch and see what happens. Perfect. So if somebody wants to do just that, how do they find you? Yeah. So a um, couple of different ways. You can go to my website um, at usageriatricservices.com. Um, I have links in there all over the place where you can actually click on it and get your clarity call scheduled. Um, you can also email me. That's an easy way too. I, I check my email many times every day. And that's at J-O-D-I-K-A-Y, Jody K, at usageriatricservices.com. Um, you can call, but I a lot of times work remotely and might not have cell service. That's why I really recommend going actually to my website um, because the links are there. There's also lots of free downloads there. Perfect. All right, Jody. thanks so much for being on the show today. Such good information always. And um, we look forward to having you on again. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kim. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Life Happens with Kim Hegwood. Be sure to tune in every Thursday at 10 a.m. wherever you listen to your podcasts as we navigate through the challenges that emerge as life happens. The content of this podcast does not establish an attorney-client relationship or constitute attorney-client privilege, legal, medical, financial, or any other professional advice.